Today I'm cutting open the Thoroughgood boots to find out the truth behind some of the long held questions about these boots and thanks to Beard Brand for sponsoring this video. So this is gonna be kind of a two part video because to really understand these boots, you almost have to compare them to the Red Wings. So this video will cut them apart, answer some of those questions. The next video will compare them to the Red Wings because there's some really important things to consider when deciding between these two boots. And then we got two more mock toes for the October series, we've got Thursdays, boots that'll be that'll be on Thursday and then White's new mock toe which I'm super excited for and then the finale. So there's really three questions I want to answer in this video that I haven't really found answers for in any other videos or reviews of these boots. The first one is what is this triple stitch across the side of the boot here. The second one is just generally what's inside of this boot and what are all the layers. And the third one is this a Goodyear welted construction like it says in the product description product description or is it storm welted or Norwegian welted kind of like it looks like with this extra stitch on the welt so now let's kind of go over the boot information and go through what we know so far so the brand is Thoroughgood the model is the American Heritage six inch mock the leather I got is tobacco they cost $205 but Thoroughgood doesn't sell them directly so like the price kind of varies depending on where you get them I got these on Amazon for 205 they weigh one pound, 14 ounces, and they're made in the United States. So usually I don't really talk about my wear and experience of these boots or any of the boots I do because I don't have the time to wear them all, but these ones I actually wore for quite a while. I wore them to actually move the shop down here to Salt Lake. I wore them logging for a weekend and I wear them quite a bit in the shop. And um, I was really impressed by how comfortable these boots were right off the bat. They, they, I wore them for eight hours the very first day and the only issue I really had was right at my pinky toe where that leather creases, it kind of was rubbing on my pinky toe. But other than that, there's really no break-in period with these boots. And I don't really talk about the break-in of boots unless they're really hard to break in or if there's no break-in period. So I thought that was worth mentioning. So now let's kind of go over the information that we can gather from these boots before we cut them in half. So starting with the leather. So this is an oil tan leather, which is basically just a chrome tan leather with tons and tons of oils infused into it and it's tumbled. And that's kind of where you get that really soft feel and the malleability of these boots compared to all the other boots that we, we've reviewed. These literally have no break-in period because the leather's tumbled. And if you're not familiar with what tumbled leather is, so most of the leather in all the boots that we review are just a regular leather and the temper of the leather is, is the natural temper or the firmness of the leather after it's being tanned. But with this leather, they actually throw in basically a giant barrel that's like 15 feet across and there's tons of hides in there and it rolls and, and flips the, the hides and it just slowly it's kind of softens and folds and, and gets the leather to a point where it's, it's almost pre-broken in. But because it's tumbled and because they have, there's so much oil infused into this leather, the actual color of the leather varies quite a bit from, from boot to boot. Like if you see like this side of this, of this boot is pretty dark compared to this boot is quite a bit lighter. And this boot is from a different pair of boots. This is the boot I just barely posted that video on how to clean and condition these. So if you haven't seen that one, check that video out, but you can see the, the difference in the color. And then as for the thickness of this leather, it's 2.5 millimeters, so about on par with the other work boots that we've seen. And that kind of brings us to the first question, um, what is this stitch length for? And one of the the disadvantages of a tumbled and really oiled chrome tan leather is it tends to have a lot of stretch. And it's not really a big deal in some of these smaller panels like around the toe because with an inch and a half of leather, you're only gonna have maybe a quarter inch of stretch at, its, at most. But when you've got a, a giant panel of leather like here at the shaft, like this is eight inches of leather. And with this tumbled leather, you're gonna have a lot of stretch throughout here. The positive side is you, this tumble leather is really easy to break in, but it tends to be a little bit floppy and stretches a little bit too much. So the stitch gives just a little bit of structure and a little bit of support so it doesn't overstretch. Next is the outsole. So this is Thoroughgood's Maxwear outsole. And it's kind of different from all the other wedge soles out there because all the other wedge soles in the various uh, thicknesses and, and densities are all rubber based. Well, Thoroughgood's, theirs is polyurethane based. So it's allegedly a lot more wear resistant, but also uh, they, people say it's a little bit harder and it's not quite as soft. Next is the welt. So most boots in this price range, you're gonna see a leather welt, but the thorough goods are some sort of man-made material welt, whether it's rubber or plastic or probably PVC. I'm not a huge fan of plastic welds because they have a tendency to crack and split, especially in cold weather. So I would way rather see a leather welt um, on these boots. But a lot of people say they don't they haven't had a lot of issue with them. And if you have had issues with it cracking, let me know because I haven't seen a whole lot of people that had issues with it. Next is the insert. So usually I don't talk much about inserts because they're usually replaceable and they're not really interesting. They're usually just foam. But I actually really like these one or this one because 
it's it's a dual density to where you've got foam throughout most of it and then at the heel and at the ball of your foot there's little patches of gel and it's super comfortable and they call it their ultimate shock absorption system next to the lining so this boot doesn't really have any lining except from the toe and the vamp area and it's just a cotton drill fabric liner now to the counter cover which is a flesh out leather counter cover which i like a lot especially compared to the danners that was literally just fabric that will wear out significantly faster than a leather counter cover now the next three things i still have a little bit of question about starting with the insole so underneath that insert there's a layer of poron which is a really shock resistant not like electrical shock but like every time you take a step that shock of the, your foot hitting the ground travels through your body well poron is supposed to or allegedly cuts that down and makes it more comfortable. I don't know if that's really true or not, but I know for sure that these boots are more comfortable with that pour on layer, but I don't really know what's underneath it. I don't know if it's a leather insole underneath or if it's fiberboard. So let's we'll see if we can get it cut in half. Next is the shank. So I know that it's a fiberglass shank, but I don't really know where it's at in the boot because like the Red Wings didn't have a shank. The Danners, the shank was actually built into the outsole itself. And most boots have the shank attached to the insole. So it's fiberglass, but I don't really know where it's at. And the last thing is the construction. So this is, I'm not 100% sure about this one because on their website, they say this is a Goodyear welted construction, but this extra stitch line around the welt makes me think that it's a Norwegian welt. And what's the difference? Well, a Goodyear welt, the stitch that holds the upper to the welt is hidden underneath of the welt. And a Norwegian welt, that stitch that holds the welt to the upper is exposed just like we see here. So it looks just like a Norwegian welt. And I haven't really seen any videos or reviews talk about if it is Norwegian or if it's Goodyear welted. And the only way for me to know is by cutting it in half. So let's cut it in half after we take 15 seconds to talk about Beard Brand. The really cool thing about Beard Brand is instead of having five different products with five different smells, you can get all of your hygiene products with the exact same smell so you don't end up smelling like the deodorant aisle at Walmart. And they have a lot more interesting scents. They're a little bit more grown up with little hints of coffee or tobacco or hops. So you, you smell maybe a little bit more your age rather than those cheap aerosol cans you used in seventh grade. And follow the link in the description below and use the code ROSEANVIL at checkout to save $25 off your Beard Brand starter kit and seriously get the temple smoke because this stuff's delicious. So thanks to Beard Brand. So you may have been thinking, man, that boot that Weston was cutting up was really similar to the boot he just finished restoring and made an entire video about fixing. Well, you'd be correct because I cut one boot in half and then the memory card was corrupted. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna switch memory cards. And I recorded and everything looked good. And then I went to review the footage afterwards again and it got corrupted so there was another boot destroyed so i switched cards and cameras and had to cut my own pair that's fully broken in perfect shape and i just spent all that time on that asmr restoration video so kind of sad but let's see what's inside Now let's answer question number two, what's inside a thorough good boot? Let's go through the layers starting with the outsole, working our way up. We got that max wear outsole and then that rubber midsole. And above that, we got the cork filling. And above that is the fiberboard shank. And it's, it's not really attached to anything. It's just kind of glued to the insole. I don't think it's riveted because 
I don't think you can rivet a fiberglass shank. And then above the shank, we can see now that it's a fiberboard insole and not leather, topped with that pour-on. And then if we look at the counter, it's a non-woven cellulose counter, which is pretty common for this price range. And then we can finally see the lining here, that's that cotton liner. And what's interesting on one of these boots, I was looking at them, and it's actually started to separate a little bit already, which was really surprising. So it kind of makes my suspicions of this wearing out a little bit faster than leather, a little more realistic. And that leads us to the final question that's been unanswered about thorough good boots. What's going on with this welt? So now we can see that this stitch right here is actually a fake stitch. That's that stitch up on the sidewall of the welt doesn't really stitch to anything, which is really surprising. Um, especially in a work boot, you'd think that all the stitches would have a purpose. So I guess it's just for decoration, which really isn't that big of a deal because we saw it in the sole of air boots, they had a decorative stitch on the welt and I don't think it's that big of a deal. The only concern I would have is this being a plastic or rubber welt, those extra holes might make it a little bit more susceptible to cracking and splitting, having those threads being punched in there. And if you look closely, you can see that stitch line going from the welt down through the midsole, and then the stitch line going from the upper to the welt that's tucked underneath of there. So now we know it's a Goodyear welted boot, and we know that that stitch line is fake, which is really surprising. So now what do I think of this boot after cutting it in half and kind of answering those questions I had? I think it's a really good boot for a really good price and it's really comfortable, or it was really comfortable until I sacrificed my own pair. And um, yeah, I think it's a really good, a good deal, especially compared to the Danners for around the same price range. This boot fixes a lot of the problems Danner has. And I think it's still just as lightweight. And I think it's just as good of a boot with a lot of those problems fixed. And the only issues I really have with this boot is that non-leather welt, that fiberglass shank that's kind of floating around in there, and this lining, it looks like it has the potential to split and come apart. And all those aren't that big of a deal. Like I don't think you're really gonna have that big of an issue with the shank or the welt. It's just getting a little bit nitpicky. And I think that's really where this next video of comparing these to the Red Wings is gonna give a lot of context to this boot and why you'd wanna choose one over the other and really help people make an informed decision about which boot to buy and why. So thanks for watching and let me know what you guys think. And if you've owned a pair of these, have you had any issues with this boot and what were they? And if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing because I'm trying to get to that 300,000 subscriber mark by the end of the year. And if we do, I'm gonna give away 30 pairs of boots to you guys. 30 pairs of boots to my local homeless community to help them through these cold Utah winters and then give away $3,000 worth of store credit for my website. And speaking of giveaways, I keep forgetting to announce the winners of the white sneaker video giveaway and the Red Wing giveaway. So here they are, congrats to the winners and thanks for everything you guys do. And I gotta go buy a new pair of Thoroughgoods. See ya.